Hello, welcome. I'm Enigmas. Get some cutting done. Uh, yep. Yeah. So last time, I guess uh, we got uh, we got some bevy up and going. We got uh, Marisa here. I guess that's the name of this Toho character. Displayed nicely to our window. This is all fine and good. But uh, yeah, we need to get to some of the uh, core aspects, I think, of what it is that we're doing to set our window up for being able to display the basic things that we need to display to do some gamey stuff. And uh, so goodbye, Marissa. All right. Yeah. Let's go ahead then, and I think I will remove her from the code base. And uh, yep, go ahead and delete that. Burns is found. Yeah, I know. I just... Alright. Oh my goodness. Just... No. Cool. And yeah, no, not safe delete nonsense. Give me the dangerous delete. That's how I like my deletes. Quick and dangerous. Alright. Let's get some music going. Playing around. All right. You're done with her for the moment. Yes, yes. We have got our initial bevy sort of a setup here. We gave it our window descriptor. Added in our clear color resource. Very cool. <clears throat> now, uh, now what? And some default plugins, right? Right. And as we determined before, it's the default plugins that really gives us a lot of the. Woo! Bunch of stuff we got up and going. Wow, look at all that. Alright, I wonder how this Bevy PBR plugin is doing, huh? It's not PBR yet. Consider this name aspiration. Alright. <laughs> yeah, see, still got some hmm, edge cutting sort of stuff going on here, and that is fine and good. As I recall, I think that. This Bevy Robo, this is the Bevy Engine, yep. So if I come into here, I recall something about, yes, the PBR and or clustered forward rendering being under their focus areas for, you know, few for stuff that they're working on now, I guess. Which is uh, pretty cool, pretty cool. We're, all, we're only up to version, like, what, 0, 2 something or other? So we'll be focusing on kind of a 2D workflow for now, I think, then. Yeah? And, uh, what does that mean? That means I need to officially put down some tiles for tile mapping. I basically want, um, here, let's go ahead and, where did I put it? Alright, I had some sort of like a little play area here. Yes, my RLTK play. Here we go. Cargo run. We can start getting toward this with Bevy quickly. And that would be good. That is what I want. Yes. So basically here there are a set number of tiles. I forget how many tiles we threw in there. I recall it being a 16 by 9 ratio. I think the height was 40 something. I believe it was divisible by 9, right? So either like what? Oh, 36, right? Or 45? 45 or 54? Something like that, right? As far as the height goes. I think that's what we were doing. So. You want to be able to, to do that with uh, this sort of a thing. With the bevy, I think. And, with, you know, everything got bigger, right? As I resized the window. The text got bigger. Right? All these little dudes down here, they all got bigger. Everything kind of at the same size. Everything got bigger. So, uh, yeah, based on, based on whatever the window's at, right? So if I make it really dinky... You know, that was some micro looking stuff there, right? Alright, so now we can we can just play around with that. So what if I stretch it out to like <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, more or less. I mean, that's why we don't want. That's why we want to make the window not resizable by the user by uh, by this sort of means here, right? You have to go into the game's options, I think, to choose a resize for the window so that we can keep our game looking appropriate. Right, that's, that's sort of the idea. We also need to be able to factor in a wide variety of, uh, what? Resolutions? Yeah. You know, resolutions, screen sizes, all sorts of things. So let's, uh, let's play around with some notes to figure out what it is that we think that would be vault. Uh, yes, yeah, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna make a new scratch file. Some plain text. All right. Let's see, so I'm gonna do like the hard hardware survey. All right for what? For not stream, but Steam. I get the Steam hardware survey. There we go. And now what? I'm gonna take a look. I think at some of the common primary display resolutions that we could find. So, like, the absolute highest percentage of users we see are still rocking 1080p sort of a resolution. I'm personally over here. And you can see a little less than a percent. That's where they're at. So, but another sizable percentage points, right? They're over, they're hanging out over here by this kind of 4K resolution, I think, right? With the, uh, literally twice as much height, twice as much width as the 1920 by 1080. I think I've got a monitor somewhere that, that does this sort of resolution. Like maybe, maybe a laptop, I forget. All right. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. But what else is big here? Man. This, this one's really big. I think I've seen this in like sort of laptop display resolutions before. It's sort of like 768 height. If we add, if we add these two together, you know, because they're both at 768 height, they're like, what, six pixels off width-wise? That's, that's barely a difference, right? So, this guy here, this is like 10% of the market range. Alright, so we want to accommodate as many folks as possible. Right? Uh, I think that this here, despite only being like, you know, a, representing a small percentage of, uh, you know, desktop display resolutions, it's a high percentage in windowing, windowed display use, you know, setups. You know, people wanting to stream their stuff via OBS. You know, let's say you've only got a 1920 by 1080 sort of a monitor. I could easily see you being like, yeah, I want to, I want to output my stream to 720p. Therefore, my window should be at 720p. So, I could see this being a, a very popular sort of a windowed mode setup. Um. Yeah, between the 720, 1080, right? Maybe this guy here for the 4K sort of things, right? So let's uh, let's try to take keep that in mind. All right, so we're just gonna go with we're gonna think originally about kind of 720, right? The 1080. We're gonna think about what, the 3440. Those are the odd ones. Right, because if we, if we go back to it, ah, where'd he go? How'd I close it? You really not want to pop it back for me? Fine, whatever. I see how it is. I see how it is! Let's just do it again, right? Uh, the hardware steam survey. Let's try that again with our primary. There we go. Boom. Right, so we've got the 3440, because even this guy is 1080, right? This guy here, he's 1440, this is 1440. 1440's just showing up a lot. You know, there's some of this, there's some of this, and so we'll definitely need to think about it. Now, we don't want to out of our heads completely, but that's okay. But yeah, the 2160 and the 1440, right? So the 2160. All right, pretty cute. Well, oh, I did some work before, and I know that the greatest common factor among at least these three here was 360. Alright. I'm not sure if... 
It's also divisible into the 2160 evenly. 2160 over what? 60? Hey, look at that. There it is. All right, so we've got a uh, greatest common factor here between all of these guys at 360 pixels, right? So that means at 720p, you are looking at kind of a times two, times three. Let's see, let's double check, man. 1440, right? 1440 over 360. Oh, how about that? It is four. All right, so we can times four. Wow, that, that 2160. Yeah, it's just two up there, huh? Wow. Alright, so yeah, that, one's, that one should be times... We already did that one. It should be times 6, right? So what is 360 times 5? Let's see here. 360 times 5. 1800. Oh, Steam Hardware Survey. Were there any 1800s? Not that I could see, right? Huh. Alright. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't be terribly surprised if it came up one day, though, huh? Yeah, we'll, we'll have to keep an eye out for that. Alright, so. So that seems like a reasonable sort of thing to, to think about here. So, Kessels Game Studio says, Hey, hello, Kessels. How are you today? I'm just trying to get some super basic sort of stuff done, thinking about my 2D game. Uh, or my as-of-now 2D game. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, yep, yep, doing okay. Hanging in there. Today was a weird day. Yeah, I had kind of a health scare for a moment. That's okay. I'm good. I'm good to go. Good to go. Just minor illness sort of health scare. That's. <laughs> I got I got better. So I'm fine. Good to go. What am I looking at here? Um, yeah. So 360. So we can see then, right? If we sort of uh. Yeah, you know, so your typical pixel arty game, you never want to sort of multiply pixel art, right, by a f like a non-whole number, right? So you, you don't want to throw any fractions up in there. Just whole numbers. Let's see if I can't find some stuff on that real quick to kind of prove the point. Let's see, so I know that I, when I was looking this up in like Godot, pixel perfect rendering. I've seen some good articles on this. Let's, uh... Yes, Pixel Perfection. Godot, right? So he talks about some things. Let's see. So he's talking about the various modes here. Pixel Snap, Float Scaling, right? Uh, float scaling means that we're scaling pixels by float amounts, which can result in pixels sometimes scaling by a different amount compared to their peers. So, you know, the whole point of this is showing, like, you know, you get some weird looking pixel art if you uh, don't do the stuff correctly, right? That's what we are hoping to avoid by pre thinking about our window sizes and our, uh, you know, our tile sizes and, and everything else, yeah? So I'm thinking that I'm thinking about we're going with a 16 by 16 tile set for now. Uh, it's a bit small, maybe, but uh, I don't know. Okay, we'll, we'll, you know, we can try it out, see how it does. Uh, so that's in the uh, about my recently redone about section, uh, but it is a top-down uh, role-playing game. Uh, kind of inspired by a uh, tabletop RPGs that, you know, my friends and I have been playing. So it's a modern setting. You know, uh, I guess a CME just recently wiped out all the electronics in the world, that sort of thing. And so it's a combination of, you know, surviving in kind of this new world and, you know, getting some sort of a band together to save, save the world thing. At least... That's that's the that's what your characters are told. <laughs> All right, so but yeah, so yeah, we got some we got some basic stuff going. I, I also have some screenshots of things I was playing around with when I was doing stuff in Godot. Ooh, zombie restaurant game. 
That sounds fun. It'll be, is it'll be like that top-down game that's or just with zombies, or maybe the fight off the zombies as you prepare the food. I don't know. Are that are the zombies preparing the food? <laughs> you have to program the zombies, maybe. See, what we could do here then is we could say something like what 360 over 9 times 16 640 640 by 360 then. This is the sort of uh base remultiplied resolution kind of what we're thinking here so we are, so we have a wide variety of weird stuff to take into account go ahead and just grab a bunch let's just grab them throw them in here all right excellent it came out better than I thought it would <laughs> all right so let's uh, we're not too we're not terribly concerned with all these percentage points right Yeah, 768. 720, 68, 68. 900. 900. It's definitely not 9003, so yeah, 900. 900. 1050. Is that really a resolution, man? Oh my goodness. Ooh, 1050. Yeah, look at that. 1050. Crazy. Alright. 1200. Yeah, that's 1440s. Oh, Alright, looks good. Yeah, let's clean that up a little bit. So that's our pre-multiplied sort of resolution here, right? Okay, great. So based on our sort of pre... We, we know we never want to multiply the resolution by... Uh, a fraction. No floating point values. Only ever, uh, what do you call it, whole numbers, right? So we can see here that, like, for this sort of resolution, right, we're going to want to go with, like, the, uh, with the times two, right? And same thing with this guy. Let's see, what does times three get you? You might go times three here. Because if, uh, so you'll see a little less of the game than someone running at 1080p, right? But like, you know, 1080 isn't too far from this, right? So we have to come up with what we want this to be, right? So this right here is our quintessential times two scenario. And we don't want to do bars either, I don't think. I don't, I don't think I want to do bars. I think it's, it's just, it's going to have to be okay. Let's see, so how, so what's the difference then between, let's see, we want to take a look at 900, right, minus 720. That's 180. Wow, is that, that's smack dab in the middle of our 360, isn't it? <laughs> we have to choose then which, which way to go. That's, that's smack dab in the middle. Um, hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna say... I'm gonna say times two, I guess, right? Yeah. Uh, times two. Anything higher than that will be times three, though. All right, like, so at 901, that's kind of where the cutoff is for that. So this guy here, yeah, he's definitely a times three. Right, times three. So I think, yeah, so it's easiest just to go based off of height. So then any sort of like, you know, if it's narrow, then you see less of the game world, I guess, right? If it's wider, you see more and more of it. That's just how we do. Uh, yeah. If 
people are doing what they do. That's pretty cool. Alright, yeah, it's gonna make, make stuff happen. So 1200, 1200. Alright, so 1200 minus what? 1200 minus what? 360? You. Yeah. Minus 720, right? Oh, then that wasn't it at all. You. Yeah. Well, duh. Duh. You want 1200 minus 1080. That's what we want. So it's closer to the... So that's closer to the uh, side here, right? Boom. 1440. This is exactly our times four sort of guy. That's where we want him to be. Uh, times three. Times four. Oof. Times six. So uh, there's. <laughs> so if you're if you're so if you're playing on a computer, we've got this sort of 4K resolution. Wow, you can really sort of like, yeah, for, from like a windowed sort of game, you could you could you could hit any one of these sort of multiplication factors to be able to help big or small. You want to make the window, right? So that's uh. So have to think about that. All right. So it'd be really nice then if we had some sort of algorithm. If we had some sort of algorithm for figuring out what it is that we want. And I think that, so what we're discovering here is kind of like, you know, if you're sort of at the cusp, like, like these guys. I guess the point, the point I'm getting at is this, right? So if you're at 721. Right, we don't want to suddenly jump to a to a times three, right? You don't want to suddenly jump to a times times three resolution, right? And if you're at seven, what nineteen, we don't want to suddenly jump to a times, yeah, one resolution, right? Yeah, so we uh we don't we don't want this. So that means that the number of tiles, all right, 16 by 16 was kind of the idea. Right now we're only measuring kind of in heights with uh, width being a function of the aspect ratio, right, and the height. I think it's what we want. Um, I'm gonna double check something I sent to someone a while ago. It was kind of a first stab at a uh, at some sort of an algorithm here. I don't think it's quite correct yet. It's uh, not quite where we want it to be. All right, we've got. Y units, X units. This was to help determine the units, right? Based off of our 16 pixel high tile. Right? Where we've got some we've got our Y resolution. Let's go ahead and you know, plug some of this stuff in for fun. I don't know. You do a math on live stream, that's kind of like... <laughs> oh man, that's okay. I see you get over it. And, uh, make stuff happen. Hmm. Alright. That was kind of, that was kind of an idea I had. What does it mean? I don't know, man. I don't know. So. So it's about figuring out... So yeah, the int value of 360 over i. Right, but we kind of want to round up based on, yeah, we want it to round properly, right? So what, half and above, you round up, right? Below half, you round down, something like that, right? So we could, uh... Hmm. 
That's the sort of thing I think that we're looking at. And that's gonna mess with our mod over here, right? Because we're not just talking about... Hmm. Because this, I think the problem with this algorithm was that it was assuming basically we'd want a certain number of tiles per height, maybe? I want to go instead with thinking about, like, you now realize I only ever want to multiply the, yeah, the sizes of these things by whole numbers. And that's it. So... So the question is, how do we get there? Uh, the reason I'm not using the uh, article that I brought that I brought up here earlier, where he talks about how to do this sort of stuff in Godot, is because his solution involved a lot of like bars, sort of a thing. See, now his uh, so his, his game is now floating in this background of like black bars that are around it. All to keep it pixel perfect without showing anybody more or less of the the game world, I guess. Yeah, we're not like it's okay if somebody sees a little more or you know a little less of the game world. It's fine. Yeah, you know, and stop punishing people for having nice things. I don't know. <laughs> uh, what do you want to do? Alright, we're gonna think about this. Whew. Man. Let me, uh, let me ask someone a question real quick. Doop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop -a So we know generally about how many units we want, but it's like, again, I'm not kind of doing that right here, right? You just figure out... Right, so I guess then we need to size the tile based on the height. That's all. Okay. Okay. Okay, I think I got it. We want to size this tile based on this height, right? Therefore, we need to do something like this. Ready? Uh, so we've got some sort of, uh, you know, Y resolution, right? And we need to sort of like, let's see. I guess we need to figure out how many tiles is too many, sort of a thing, right? Hmm. Because we definitely want to do some sort of length. No, I went over 16. You just do it even over 360, right? Yeah, we were talking about re Y resolution over 360 earlier. Right, we were. And I kind of want like, maybe sort of integer, maybe sort of like round it. Yeah, if we round it, right? What if we round it? This is gonna give us some number. Hmm. hmm. So. Rounded. So you get like, you know, 720 over. Right, 360. Right, is equal to 2. Right, so you get like what? 800. 800 over 360 is also equal to 2. Right? And the other is 768, that's equal to 2. Maybe 900 is going to be. It's 
times three guy. Maybe, right? We want to... Because he's kind of like right at that halfway mark. At the 0.5 mark. Right, because if we said... 360 times 2.5, exactly, right? 360 times... 2.5, sort of exactly. Yes, we get 900. Alright, good sanity checking there. So we get some sort of value here, right? Let's just, uh... Let's call it I. For now. Some sort of, like, I number. So now we know that we have this sort of a rounded number. And it's gonna tell us... Yeah. Alright, so yes, let's go ahead then and put it into our thing here, right? Where we can say, like, what? The 900 over 360, then you expect to be equal to 3. These are rounded numbers. So... That is what we want. Yes. So, with this now, this actually becomes like our multiplier then, I guess. That's, that's the point. Yeah, so that's our multiplier. Right, so then we could take 16 times the multiplier, right, 16m, and we could do what with 16m? Well, we can divide that, right, we could take our actual y res, right, you can take our y res, divide that by 16 multiplier, and what's that going to get us? We're probably going to want... I think, a fra I think a fractional value is okay here. I think that's... I think we do want a fractional value. Okay, and I think this is going to tell us the kind of, uh... Y, um... Sort of grid, the, uh, tiles. Y, T. Sure. Uh, the number of tiles in the Y direction, right? Kind of what we're looking at. I'm, I'm noticing that I'm probably writing this the other way around, right? T Y, resolution Y, right? That's kind of, I think that's better. I'm not going to fix any others. Or maybe this guy, I'll fix this guy. So resolution in the Y direction, all right? So now we know that our tiles in the Y direction are going to be equal to, what? Uh, right, R over 16M, and now for fun, let's go ahead, we'll check that versus what we've got here, right? So here we've got a uh, 720, right, over about 16 times 2, right, is 32. Now uh, if we say 720. And this should be equal to 22.5, I think. So, what are we, what are we doing? 7, 20. Over 32. 22.5. That's, that's what I expected. Excellent. Right? That equals to 22.5. Sweet. What else can we do? We can do a variety of things. We can say what? Yeah, let's try that 800 one, right? For fun. 800. This, that one's also going to be multiplied by 2, right? So, 800 over 32. 100 over 32. It's 25. How about that? Oops. 25. Alright, that's pretty cool. What else do we want? That 900. That 900 is going to be like. So let's do 768 first. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. But, all right, 7. Let's, I don't know, let's do some completely different examples. I do want to do 900 though. Alright, so 900. This is going to be 32 plus 16 is 48, right? 48. So that's going to be 18.87, right? So 900 over what? 48 equals that guy. That's how many that's how many tiles. For units. Units! That's Yes! This is the common terminology for doing this stuff and things. Excellent. Let's do that. So we've got UY is equal to that. That's pretty good here, right? Right. And so we know then that 
Uh, with this 1440, it'll also be 22.5 units, right? And just like uh, this guy here, he'll also be 22.5 units. Uh, where's a different looking guy? 1050. 1050. Oh, okay. So, yes, so we can have 1050 over 48. That's 21.875 units. All right, 21.875, and this is for what? This was for the 10, 1050, right? 10, 1050 over 48. And I believe that the, uh, yeah, that was kind of the other super weird guy, wasn't he? Yep, That 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 is cool, all right. Yes, yes. So, ah, what do we want? Oof, man. All right. Yeah, what happened to the one guy? He's telling me about his uh, cooking uh, game and he ran away. I don't know. I want to hear more about it. Right, so yeah, we used to kind of do that sort of thing, right? And we know that with this 1050 guy over the 360, right? That that's going to be equal to 3 as well. Yeah, don't know. You got your cell going? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's pretty, that's pretty good, I think. That seems like some simple math. I like, I'm liking the simple math there. It's pretty fun. Let's, uh, let's do like a UX, right? Is equal to what now? Uh, we could basically just do the same thing, right? We could say resolution X over 16M. Alright, so then this will get us. Let's see. So let's go with uh, 1024. Yeah. This guy here is likely going to be over 2, right? Although it's not defined by the uh, X dimension, so we don't know. We don't care. Fine. So we can say what? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. No, not, not 2. 32, because it's the 16 2. Yes. Yes, the 16 2. Now we have... Alright, so we got our 10, 24, over 32. And of course it's 32. Apparently 32 squared is 1024. Excellent. <laughs> uh, all right. So. Yeah, so we do a variety of things with that. We also have this, uh, yeah, so 1280 seems common. And so we can have, ooh, we can have either a 16, or, or I mean a 32 size pixel, right? Or it looks like we could have a 48 size pixel with it. So let's do let's do both occurrences for fun. All right, this is uh, so based on our algorithm thus far. This is what we expect. Uh, what am I doing? So yeah, we were gonna do over by 32 first. So 1280 over 32. We got 1280 over 32. 40. Sweet. Right? So that's equal to 40. Pretty big. But then what? Then we also have 1280 over 48. Alright, 1280 over 48. Oof! That's a, that's, a, that's a weird one. That's a weird one. I don't like that. Uh, 
All right. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, I'm sure it'll work out okay. I think we'll just tell the... Yeah, so when we do this sort of math, I think we'll, uh, we'll have to, we'll, we'll have to round, we'll want to round. No, we won't. No, no. What do you want to do? I don't know. I don't know. I guess we'll keep it as precise as we can. And then that will help. Alright. Ooh! Hmm, man. This 1280 by 1024. That, that might be a tricky one. Alright. We'll have to find out. Alright. So we already know what? Yep. We already know. Let's, let's check out, uh, let's check out this 3440 times 4. Well, right? We've got 16 times 4. Is 64, right? So now we want to say 3440 over 64. 53.75. 3440 over 64. 53, wow. So yeah, there's going to be quite some variance there to expect then in terms of trying to get the game to kind of run on the more narrow resolutions versus like the ultra wide resolutions so that'll be it'll be interesting i think that the biggest sort of thing to think about there then might be kind of ui arrangement but uh for now we're just gonna we're just gonna take this sort of naive approach no sidebars or nothing we're just gonna let the we're just gonna let the resolutions play out as they do and that's kind of the idea here. So the whole this so this whole thing here is about setting up our 2D camera. That's uh, that's what a lot of this is about. Once we've set up our 2D camera to where that is happy. Let's see. Okay. And a whole lot of other stuff just kind of falls into place real nice, I think. Alright. Let's just... i save that. Can we, like... Alright, I know it was a scratch file, but can we, like, save it to some notes somewhere, maybe? Maybe, like, uh... Save as somewhere? Nah. Alright. Go ahead then. And... Yeah, it's uh, woof, look at, all these, look at all these scratches and stuff. Delete them, right? So what do, we, what do we want here? We're gonna come up in here. We're gonna go ahead. We want some sort of like uh, directory. There we go. We want some sort of like note-taking directory here. I think we're just gonna call this our uh, what? Our uh, Yeah, our resolutions text. Yeah, okay. Oh, cool. all right. So I think that is what we want. Yeah, man. We don't we do not want this. I don't think that we need to figure this out anymore. I don't, I don't, I don't think we needed that, because that was that's what that's what got us that. I think this right here is basically just gonna be our this is our answer, right? So we want some sort of like yeah, we want to round it this way. Yeah, we don't have to worry about mods at all. So we just use the resolution of the window to get what we want. Excellent. Now all right, uh, Bevy, where'd you go, Bevy? I don't know. I'm gonna do some Bevy stuff. We gotta figure some things out. 
Because right now, we are using a default sort of camera 2D component. That's right, we're not even using this material anymore, so we don't need to worry about that. Right? Yeah. Maybe I'll import some sort of a 16 by 16 tile set that we can play with that. So right there, that's just sort of our default camera doodad. Let's go ahead then, I'm just gonna tell not to worry that these things are missing. Alright, that's just what we want, and that's fine. Don't worry about it. Control 9 to rebuild it. Making sure, you know, just quick sanity checking. Looks like it's gonna work. So, we come over here into our camera 2D components and check this out. Alright, we want zero to be closest and plus to be farthest in 2D. So we offset the camera's translation. Right, by far. Alright. And use a right handed coordinate system. Well, I'm left handed, so we'll think about that. <laughs> Alright, so, got some sort of far, is a, uh, got some sort of float in there for 32, what, what do we want, man? So we've got, he's got, he's got some stuff, he's got some stuff, so this is our defaults for the camera 2D components, right? So let's, let's just go ahead, let's, let's close everything else. Um, just kind of want to focus on these guys at the moment, right? where we're looking at this guy and we just said yeah just just spawn me the default camera that's all we said right so what does it mean to spawn the default camera well he takes in this camera guy he takes in orthographic projection which is uh what do you want you just want far and that's it yeah look at that left right bottom top near far all right so it's, uh, it's been a moment since I've set up an orthographic camera, so that's fine. We'll get, we'll get to it. We'll figure it out. Alright, so we've got some visible entities. Visible entities? What is, what is this about? Right? Visible entities. Um, uh, just value vec visible entities, property ignore, right? What? I guess, so I'm guessing your default is what? Uh, so where's... Do you not have a default? If he didn't define one, then his default is a... What do you call it? Yeah, his default is just gonna be a blank list, right? Yeah. Alright. He's got some... So he's got a default translation here for the camera. These are, these are all camera 2D components. So, okay, so this right here is supposed to be a bundle. This is a component bundle. That's interesting. I haven't seen, I don't know if I've seen the concept of component bundles in these ECS engines yet. I haven't looked at them too, too closely, to be honest. But who knows. It looks like you could just spawn. Yeah. This is taking in a components and it implements a dynamic bundle with send, sync, and static. Alright. Cool. Yeah, so we're gonna take in the camera 2D thing. We're gonna do some uh, defaults. Right, right. We want to we want to configure a camera because why? Because right now he's using what? We don't like what he's doing. I don't. I don't really like what he's doing because he's doing like a um. 
I thought it was supposed to be like based on the pixels or something, right? Yeah, yeah, it's based on the pixels. You don't want that. No, I don't want that. I'm trying to figure out how he bases on the pixels based on what I'm seeing here. I'm not quite seeing yet. Alright. Yes, we gave it this bundle. We said to give it the default version of the bundle. This right here says derive bundle. We derive a component bundle for the 2D for 2D camera entities. Alright. Yeah. All right, how do I set up my camera? Hmm. Oh, we could check to see if anything, if anyone else has played with the uh, bevy cameras. I imagine that Robo game has. Yeah, he has too. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do so. It's transform and there's global transform. Seems interesting. I'm transforming from a translation. What do you want? Far minus 0.1? Alright. Sure, and that's in like in the that's in the Z axis. Which is fair, right? We're gonna be like kind of like setting the camera up above the above the plane. Take a look at it. Right? And by how much? A thousand? Mm -hmm. Zero to be the closest and plus far to be the farthest. Alright. It's kind of weird. I would have thought you made the Z index uh, kind of the opposite. Where, like, the bigger the number, the closer it is to you. I don't know. Let's see. S name is some base camera 2D. It's too string. Yeah? Is it just camera 2D? <laughs> That's the name. <laughs> or why not? We could rename the camera then, I guess, if we wanted to. That's fine. So let's double check our orthographic projection. Again, it says it's using some sort of a default here, right? Uh, camera projection. What do we want? Default. What, zero for all of the things? That doesn't make any sense. With a thousand far? Hmm. Almost doesn't even matter what he did to get it going, right? We just want to change it. How are we changing it? Well, okay, so we're given this guy here. He's got a projection matrix. Hmm. We didn't change at all. So what's the default for this? Simple default for depth calculation. Yeah, it just says default here, right? So what is this then? Identity? I don't know. Unless you specify the default for camera. Oh, well, you can get out of it, right? Alright. Got something here called a camera system. Which is very interesting in these window resized events, which one would expect, yeah? Alright. You wanna play around with that? Very interesting, is it do anything with the matrix in there? Alright. The... Camera has a projection matrix. But then here we provide a projection matrix. It's a bit weird. Weird. Alright. I know this is just the default one, right? Which this should all be zeros. Right? 
this is camera projection for this one. It takes in all of these things, which we expected. And this right here is the default for it, where, yeah, he just says zero to all of them. Alright, so let's go ahead. Maybe all of the zeros plus far tells it something special. It's a right-handed orthographic projection matrix with a zero to one depth range. What about far? But I didn't tell you what any of the, uh, that's left-handed one. <laughs> I both say zero to one, uh, depth ranges. That's funny. Hmm. Let's, uh, let's refresh our memories on how to set up an orthographic projection, right? Uh, I want to, like, set up an orthograph... Orthographic projection, please. That's it. Branch of Pixel, huh? That's a funny sounding website. <sighs> I could, uh... Alright, what do I need for an orthographic projection? Mm-hmm, lots of math. Tell you what, where's, where's Robo at? Yo, Robo, where you at? Let's, uh, let's play around. What do you want? Let's be like the source. Maybe he's got some sort of camera somewhere, right? Yeah, all right. So let's go with a uh, camera. No. Hmm. Not even like a default one, huh? Yeah, so you must be hiding it. Resources, levels, but components. These are all your defined components for your game, right? Let's see. What's this guy got? Into two ops? Alright. Moving dirt for some other stuff. Tiles. Yeah, alright. Hmm. Lugans. Maybe render. Ah, oh, look at our little camera scale here. Alright, yeah, see? He's, he's got some stuff going. Got some camera translation working. Alright, cool. That sounds good. You got any more camera stuff? Render setup, huh? There we go. There's there's an orthographic projection. Let's you know, with some tops and lefts and rights. All right, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's how that goes. That's what max board width times something or other. Yeah. So the idea here is within setting up these projections, right? Is that we need to be able to map the uh, kind of the pixels that we're rendering. Right, it's sort of like in-world units. And I think by default they said that they were just going with uh, one pixel per unit. Which uh, doesn't sound super great for tile-based games. And I guess that the, the guy who wrote this Bevy Robo stuff, he agrees. And that is why he set it up here, his own little camera guy going, right? Yeah, so we're going to want to take a look at some of this stuff. But in particular, yeah, so we got, what, bottom zero? All right. Left is zero. All right. Hmm. Top is max board height. Yeah. Now where did this max, max board height, huh? 
So that's right. He has. He's gonna have a fixed grid, I think. Right. So where did our where did our max board height? Where did you come from, man? Did you even defined anywhere in here? Did you get imported somewhere? I don't know. We got some comps over here, I guess. He just imported. Let's see if we can check out his comps. Oh man, where your, where your cons at? There we go. So you made mod cons in here. I guess it wasn't worthy of a file, so it's just kind of hidden inside of this, uh, this main thing here. Which is fine. That's fine. So we've got some sort of max board height. We got some, we got some other stuff. Blah, blah, blah. So I think then, to set up our camera, we were on the right track with what we were doing. So thank you very much, Bevy Robo project for helping us figure that sort of stuff out hmm man I, just, I don't even know man got some sort of prepare render or some other stuff what are we looking at man we're looking at the orthograph like projections here we go we just want to set up something we just want something simple that is all that we want, right? Let's go ahead. All right. Yeah, let's play around with it. Right now, inside of our main guy here, you were just like, you just give me a default one. I don't know about that default one, man. So, uh, commands to spawn. That's what we got here. Commands spawn. Camera 2D components. This looks correct. This is what we want. And for now, we will say we'll use the whole default default. Here. Just to make sure that we got what we got, right? So yeah, bottom is uh, what zero. I don't know. I don't know what that means. We'll figure it out. I don't even know if we want bottom to be zero. Maybe I want bottom to be uh, negative half. Of the of the units that we that we said, yeah, maybe I do. I want origin to be kind of in the middle, don't I? Yeah, I think, I think so. All right. Yeah, so we can have origin in the middle. But I don't know that that's what we want. All right, what's your malfunction? Why are you why are you telling me no such field bottom? That is correct. There is no such field bottom, because I have done the wrong. All right, what do I need to do to do the right? I need to say orthographic projection. Orthographic projection. There we go. Comma that guy. Good to go. And now I can say bottom. He's gonna be equal to what is it? Our like like tiles, right? Tiles Y. Tiles Y. Alright. Uh over two. Alright. Alright, like kind of two F thirty. Alright. You want something like that. And for now, we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna say something like what? Uh, let tiles y is equal to 22.5 f32. I don't know. I don't recall what bottom should be. f32, how about that? That's what it wants. Next. Then that is what we shall give it. Yes. Alright. Now we can say, so now we got bottom. Now we can say top. Right, so we want to say, what do we want for tap? Want the big one, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we want to say tiles. Uh, Y. Over 2. F32. Cool. So we do that. Now we want, we want left. 
So for now, yeah, let's go ahead and we're going to assume that we're going to do a 1920 by 1080. We're not going to worry too, too much about the stuff and things, right? So now we have our resolutions text. And I know that for, so a 1920 by 1080, we're multiplying our tiles by three. That means that our tiles are 48 pixels by 48 pixels wide. If our tiles are that size, right, then we want 1920 over 48. Which gives us 40. Excellent. Alright, so now we say let tiles x equals to 40 of 32. Cool. Alright. No. So now we want to say, like, what? Negative tiles x is equal to 2. Oh, you know, yeah, over 2 F32s. That's for the left. And I think so. Then for the right, we want tiles x over 2 F32. Anything else? Window origin. Window origin? Hmm, it might be good to figure out what a window origin is. Window origin. For now, let's go ahead and say center. Because it feels like that's what we're doing there, right? He had a bottom left thing going where bottom and left were zero. But our zero should be in the center of the window. So let's, uh, so let's go ahead and do that. And what's your malfunction? Oh, 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 oh. Let's see. I don't know, man. No origin center. That looks correct. No, yeah, looks correct. Oh, so you're, you're lying to me. It was fun. All right. Let's uh, see if it compiles. It's always fun. Let's double check window origin here. Do you say what window origin means ever? No, you don't document that for me? Uh, that's fine. Just, uh... I can worry about it. Some camera S. We're going to assume that it's correct. Until proven otherwise. Uh, yep. Yes, yeah, so we got all our tiles there. We got a bunch of other fun stuff. That is what we want. Excellent. So now when I hit run it, oops, I changed a little white space and so it has to compile it again. My bad. Right? Yeah, so it'll be like this guy. Bottom, left, etc. Right? So, congratulations. We have. Fun has been working well. Excellent. Good to hear, Wolfie. Uh, I see that, uh, yeah, good to go. Very cool. But yeah, so, so theoretically we did a thing there. Theoretically we did a thing. So earlier in our example, right, we got a little sprite, uh, to show up. And that was pretty cool. Uh, I wonder now, like what, so now that we've changed the camera, See, I deleted her, so I can't. I can. I can get her back. I can get her back. Uh, what did you? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I'm not gonna worry about. Yeah, all these people and things plays well. All right. Don't think. All right. So. All right. All right. So things are confusing. That's okay. They are confusing. Where am I at? Yeah, so I want that up there. I want some other stuff in other places. Okay, great. What are we going to do? I think that we were going to come back out into here, into there. We're going to copy again Marissa uh, just to have something to play with, right? And we're going to go back into our POC road trip directory under assets, and that's where we're going to put Marissa. Also, I'm going to just quickly pop open 
file to play with, right? Let's see what we got going on there. Do some copy paste. Open recent. Uh, that one. All right, cool. And we can go ahead and yet we spawned our camera. Let's go ahead and respawn her just so that she's there. Yeah, so yeah, we can do that. Tab that over. All right. So, sprite components, huh? Is this another bundle? It is another bundle. Ah, oh, all right, cool. So, its default transform then should be good, right? So this right here is the default for sprite components. Oh wow, lots of things. We got some render pipelines in there, uh, some draw stuff. Draw is transparent true. That is true for the sprite. Uh, indeed. So yeah, main pass transforms. Just give me the default transform, huh? Well, I'm willing to bet that the default transform is going to be at zero zero zero, isn't it? Uh, let's see. So so the value here is a matrix four see that transform has some functions default for transform is yes identity all right that's uh oof, that's what we would have thought all right sweet so that means that it shouldn't be moved from the left or the right that we should be looking at uh yes she should be smack dab in the middle of the game and now that we've played, this is like one of those times where we're like, you know, we might get a black screen. Like, what, what happened to all that work we did? Yeah, don't worry about it. Ah, I forgot about materials. Yes, we do need to load some stuff here, right? Boom. All right, and we were getting rid of that. So we could do that. All right. I wonder how big she'll be. She's bigger than a 16 by 16 spring. So assuming we see her at all, and that this worked. Huh. <laughs> well, okay, well, at least we see her, right? Jeez, alright. That's, um. I'd be to think you didn't do anything with my camera there, Bevy. Like, did you. Did you just ignore my camera entirely? What happened here? Oh my goodness. That did, that did not do what I expected it to do. Huh. Alright. We got some sprite components, right? Alright, what do you take in? I'm gonna abstract this out. Yeah, sure. Main pass and draw and stuff, etc. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm a little confused by you, man, because I added... It was basically from the little example thing about how to do something simple. I've completely redone how this orthographic projection is supposed to be set up. Right, yeah, there's our orthographic projection. Let's uh let's go back to like what are you what are you doing to me, man? Hmm. It's kinda weird that there's this thing called orthographic projection. And there's a thing called camera. Because when you go into camera, oh look at that, there's a projection matrix. Which I kind of would have thought was coming from our little, our little friend here. You know? We got a fun little object. It's called orthographic projection. Are we didn't do any near or far setup. Let's see. This is our guy here. Yeah. Yeah, well, he didn't do any near or far setup either. Mm-hmm. 
Yes, we spawned this dude here using commands, right? Uh -huh. So you see, yeah, his is, his is slightly different to from mine, and this is fun and good. Mm. Ah. All right. I'm not sure what to do then. Yeah, that's the default. Everything is zero. Far is 1000. We just kind of left far as it was. Yeah. We left far as it was. We left near as it is. And that's at zero. Hmm. Which I'm not sure about now. Yeah. Hmm. Whatever. Figure it out, right? Yeah, I'm used to this sort of thing here. That makes a sense. Pretty sure what we did here that that was good. Right component. <sighs> I completely changed the camera, man. Nothing, yeah, nothing happened. This should have been like, hmm. Sure, why not? Alright, so now what? So now we can come in here and we're gonna say transform. Um. Alright. Identity. With translation. Uh, yeah. Vec 3. Uh, negative. 40. No, 20. Negative 20. F32. Zero. These are all, of course, F32s. Alright. Alright. So those are all F32s. The structure not visible here due to private fields. Man. Uh huh. Fine. What do you want, man? And you want me to- okay, so you want me to use the vec3 function? Fine, I'll use the vec3 function. Okay. Can I find vec3 in scope? Yeah, I know, you were supposed to- IntelliJ was supposed to tell me about that. And then, like, import it. That's kind of the idea. Alright, so this is like glam. F32 Vec3, huh? Yeah. Yeah, alright. So let's try to use Glam. Ah, fine. Alright, just hang on a second. Cargo Tone. We're going here. Want some Glam. Let's see what what. That one, please. Yes, that seems fine and good. Thank you. Main. 
right? Where did, where did it go? Blam. I get like some sort of F32, I guess, and then what? Vec3. Great. What? The module's private. Fine. Just... Why, why would you list a private module to me, LJ? I swear. Got some sort of prelude? No. Nothing useful? Alright, fine. Let's go back to... This guy uses a vector somewhere, right? No? <sighs> Vec3 came from somewhere, man. Vec3 came from... Maybe Prelude? Am I messing up? Or am I doing something silly? Could be doing something silly. Fine. I do silly things sometimes. Just for fun, let's go ahead and. Does this hash make you go away? Yeah. Go away for now. As I come back into main, I'm like, yo, dude. Give me a Vec, man. Vec 3. New. Where did you come from, anyway? Blam. You know, I, I just... Never. I don't care, man. <laughs> <laughs> alright, alright. So... We're about to find something out. Yeah, see? She's barely even off center. My camera's not doing shit. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Alright, let's so, look for more documentation. Alright. So we got some sort of, somewhere I know there's a bevy cookbook. You're supposed to be concise remedies for doing the bevy things. Alright, so let's uh, convert screen coordinates to world coordinates. That's the sort of thing I want, yeah. Alright. Built in 2D camera, right? That's the thing though, right? Is we didn't even get this thing set up. Manual solutions. I don't think that's helping us. This is like this. This assumes that you got your camera working properly to begin with, right? Or it's like uh, we're trying to. That's input handling. Putting the app. Yeah. All right. So see, there's a cursor state guy. My cursor system. He wants some stuff and things, which is cool. But we need... Okay, so in camera here, he did do a setup camera default. Right? Yeah. And we spawn the camera. Dot current entity. What's that about? I don't know. I don't know. Let's find out what it means to make the camera the current entity, right? Because that's right here under commands, spawn, camera. And this takes in the camera to decompose just like we're doing, but then they say dot current entity. Alright. So let's throw that in there. That's not... Hmm... No, that's not useful to us. 
The whole point of the current entity was to get back the entity for the camera, right? And then what? He's going to insert a resource. Okay, so the whole that whole the whole point of that was just to give the camera to the my cursor state, so that the my cursor system can operate on it. Okay, and that's all that that's about. So I don't even I don't need to worry about that at all. Hmm. Right, man. So there's also a bevy cheat sheet. Let's take a look. Yep, components, component bundles, resources, systems, queries, change detection, commands, for each, local resources, events, app initialization, plugins, right? So assets. Hierarchical entities. Useful built-in resources. Alright, so those, those do look useful indeed. Useful built-in component bundles. That's what we're trying to use right there, is our camera 2D component. Let's see, useful built-in components. Draw, translation, transform. Right. I was expecting with this negative 20 here for it to go off the map for you to see it, right? So, you have to say like what, 1920 over 2? 2? 960. 960. Save it. Yeah. I'm just thinking about these camera components I don't get. Component bundle for 2D camera into these. Maybe, maybe something about the default plugins I'm bringing in have already brought in a 2D camera. I need to do something about that. Wow. Oh, see, let's go ahead and run it. See this right here. This is what I expected when I say negative 20. I also expected her to be much larger if we were using the the new camera. We are not using this camera. Uh, why is that? Why are we not using this camera that I told it to use? Um. Let's go ahead, we're gonna go back to our sort of little robo guy example. Yeah, let's go hang out in his main for half a moment where we figure out like, yo dude. What'd you do for plugins and stuff? Now he has the default plugins right here. Alright, this right here is our this is our window descriptor. This is what we expected, right? Cool. This is our, right, so he has a wide, wide variety of resources. Add asset loader for level sets. That sounds neat up with a level set loader. This, so this is what, one of those things that we could do later on. To, so, because right now we are manually using kind of Ron and Serd, right, to, to load up our data, right? So, if we could throw that inside of asset loader instead, that'd be, that'd be cool. It'd be a more... Uh, in tune with the bevy engine, right? Uh, so he adds, he's got some sort of frame count plugin, a keyboard plugin, audio plugin. Um, he's got some stage stuff that he does. Add stage before update, move, add stage before update, poop robo, right? That sort of thing. Just fine and good. So now we're going to say what? We got this add startup system. Level system, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Then we add a variety of systems to stage. This is a yeah, the level setup system. All right, but we didn't see any cameras in here, right? Camera, nope. Hmm. All right, all right, all right. So we've got, we know that we've got some render stuff, right? Where do we, where do we use our render stuff? We know that we have a render system. Okay, so we're saying here that if we are targeting WASM, do this. Okay, that's, part, that's a part of the JS render system. If we are not targeting WASM, then 
Then what? Oh, and if for uh, what? Ops debug, right? Then we can do some debuggy stuff. If we're not targeting Wasm, and we're not doing benchmark mode, etc., etc. All right. This is JS render system, huh? All right. And default plugin. Right there, so that's the only places we see render? Oh. Renderer. Oh, here we go. If feature render, then use plugins render plugin. Be safe. Alright. Alright, that's when we went into the render plugins, right? We're like, okay, something about the render plugin here. Which is kind of basically what we have here. We told it to add, we wanted to add a thing. Okay, this is our setup. All right, so this is our and startup system. So this guy here, he's he's hanging out. He's in our startup system. We're supposed to be setting up a camera. All right. So we're supposed to be setting up a camera, a camera system. This right here says he is a render. So we've got a render state. We derive some defaults. I guess like what we have a reader for. Um, window resized which is cool that sounds super good we want to get we want to get exactly this sort of stuff set up ready to go all right that is what we want so now so now we have yeah spawn counter here we go render setup so where is where is render setup even called from right render setup Right here, this right here is inside of our plugin, so here's the render plugin finally. We're going to impl plugin for the thing. Right, and we're gonna add startup system, which is exactly what we did. Uh render setup.system. So then he's got some neat like add stage before post update, create sprites, add stage before. Before post update, update the camera, prepare the renderer, right? This guy is like, he's really big into these stages, <laughs> adding them and then putting little uh, little things to do in them, right? All right. So yeah, add system to stage. We give it a string and just like, yeah, he's uh, he seems very obsessed about it. Maybe it's the ordering of these things. I'm not sure. Oh yeah, so we could play around with Stuff like that. We're not trying to update the camera. Or maybe we should look at the camera? I don't know. What does, it, what does update camera even do, man? It just updates the camera, right? Let's see. Yeah, update camera.system, right? So if we said update camera. There it is. So what does this guy do? Yeah, he's yeah he's looking for those window resized events, which is a good thing to do to adjust our camera. Yeah, perhaps, maybe. What does this do? This seems to affect his uh, camera scale and translation. All right, all right. He says, yeah, let scale equals to that. The translation equals to that. And then he does what? What's that? Where, where did transform come from? Yeah, there's this guy here, right? Where we have this uh, transform. There it is. All right, so, uh, yeah. So for each event, you do the thing. Seems to me like maybe you get the last event, I'm not sure. <laughs> and then just, and then do it, the thing. I don't know. So transform from translation rotation scale, boom, gives them the thing. This is inside of our. We like he like changes like he, he just he de references a pointer here to do this. Where do these items come from? Hmm. Ah, for our where we queried a transform with an orthographic. A projection. Oh, that's why we're looping. That's fine. I thought that items was about the events, but no. All right. Yes. Yeah. See, he he gets the last event, just like I thought you might have. 
Now why, why would you get all the intermediate events to do the calculations each time if you can only really see one result of it, right? You just grab the last one. Which is fine and good. Um, what am I doing? What am I doing? Man. It's quiet lurkers today. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Yeah. Normally that's that's enough to change the whole coordinate system and everything. Yeah. That's what I wanted. And for it to start using it. And that seems like all that this guy did. Because what did he do? It says commands spawn the camera. That's what we did. And we said orthographic projection. Right up here. Bottom, top, left. Right. Window origin, you know, center seemed like it made the most sense. Commands spawn. Should have spawned it. It spawned the sprite, after all. Right? So why? Now oh, she looks so big. Why doesn't like it? Like negative 20 here should like. That should take her to where you saw her, off the hovering off screen somewhere, right? That's that's where it should be taking her. This is the camera. We put the camera in there. What the heck, man? Ah, let's go to our default plugins real quick. So like, so feature bevy sprite. I'm pretty sure that's one of those default features that we have that's just turned on. I mean, it must be. It works, right? Because we registered sprite, didn't we? Let's check out our sprite plugin just to double check. Like, yeah, we're adding assets, color materials, and texture atlases, and all sorts of things, right? Quad handles. Yeah. Sprite system? Yeah, we should have a sprite system code. Otherwise, how are we rendering our sprite? Uh, Bevy Renderer. It's part of our render plugin, right? And, uh, what is this? Configures the base render graph. If this is not none, base render graph will be added. If it's not none. <laughs> Alright. Oh man. And this right here says it's the default sort of plugin guy, right? The default plugin guy says, yeah, some base render graph config. Alright, so we might want to figure out how these render graph things work in Heavy. And that would be cool. Alright. Um. Man, dude. I feel like I'm not doing anything too different from these examples here. Extra atlas from grid, etc., etc. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm with you. As soon as I get a texture atlas to play with, I'll happily start doing that. But and we spawn ourselves a camera using the camera 2D components. I really feel like. All right, so let's go back to main real quick. Let's start messing around, shall we? Let's uh. So let's cut that out. What if I don't give it a camera? That's the same. Is it the same? I don't know. Find out. If to have 10. As soon as it's done building, we should be able to run it. Hmm. So she's gone without a camera. All right, that must mean there's something I'm doing wrong with setting up this camera. All right? I'm not sure. I'm not sure how or why or what. That's okay. So we're gonna figure some. We're gonna figure some stuff out. We told it where we wanted bottom, top, left, right. We, it's based on these tiles, and we're even like we're dividing everything by two, right? 
because uh, top should be half of 180, bottom should be like the negative half of 180, right? And uh, that way zero's in the middle. That's the idea here. That's, that's what we're doing. Super easy, right? And uh, if, if anything, I'm probably doing this stuff too much if I were making it optimized, right? I'd only do this math, you know, each of these math equations the once, then I have a positive and negative version of that. Good to go. All right, this should be how this works, I think. Um, I think, I'm not sure, I don't know. Remember, what was one of the things that we discovered? We discovered that camera has its own projection matrix. What's this about? I know that we derive a default for camera somehow. I don't think it's coded. Not in here, right? So, therefore, we must just be using the default sort of projection matrix. But isn't the projection matrix we're going for? Couldn't that be calculated by the camera, or is that different? No, projection model view. That's how, that's how that goes, right? Uh, MVP, model view projection. Hmm. I don't know, here's a projection. What's up with this guy, Mia? Get it. Alright, so... What's your deal? This right here is the default for the camera 2D components. Base camera 2D. Oh, I mean, I mean, this guy didn't change the camera, man. All we kept from it was the name. <sighs> it's not even us, man. This is us. This is what we did. Even so. Still keep... Because we keep it the defaults, for the camera 2D components... Right? We keep the defaults for the 2D camera components. So we inherit this camera. Yep. Just as far? Oh man. Get it? Do you do anything with the camera? Yes. The defaults. Oh great, thanks. That's helpful. Huh. I figure it has to even make sense to use the default. that looking pretty and then oh, good to go okay okay now we can also use camera 
camera. Now what do you want? It's camera one. What's a projection matrix? Super weird. Alright, boom, oh, projection matrix. Well, I have this orthographic projection. Can I get a projection matrix from it? Then what? I mean, we pretty much want to do whatever the default thing that camera components 2D does. Right? Which means name and defaults. And that's it. Grab that guy. Fine. Alright. Let's do it. Probably not. Probably not. Just yeah, import that. Base node or base camera. I don't know. Either way, I don't care. Now what? Unresolved reference. I imported it. Problem, man. Is IntelliJ just being slow? This is just slow sometimes. Where's he? Base camera. Not base. Difference? Who knows? We guess we'll find out, yeah? I guess we'll, we'll find out. Alright, it looks like it compiled. All right, well, where'd she go? It's, um... Let's go ahead and put her back in the center. Broke something. Cool. Oh, gone. Why is she gone? Seriously, what did I change? Bevy stuff. So let's go ahead and use Bevy. Kind of organize these imports a little. Yeah. Let's go ahead and organize me some imports. Increase the quality of your code. <laughs> Make it pretty. Alright, so we've got, you know, we got our ECS, we've got Prelude, we've got some render camera stuff going. Window mode, alright, looks good. Looks like we can also play around with the model here and make that a little prettier, right? 
So you throw that over there like that. Comma, hit data. On what? Boom. Guys. Come over there. All right. Let's just let go ahead and boom, put that down there. Put that there. Now I think if I do a control alt O, it'll keep it where it was. Good. Save. Control 9. Alright, unused import camera projection. Why is that unused? Ah, we said to use this, uh, we said to use its, uh, projection matrix. We wanted to get the projection matrix at some point. That's good. So uh, what if we... Uh, what, what did we mess up? I didn't mess up hash map. Yeah. Just, just whining about nothing. Alright. Alright, so... What happened here? What happened? We got tiles Y. That's what we expect. We want the bottom to be like negative tiles y over 2, right? Alright, so this is, uh... We can go with, uh, half tiles y, right? So we can say half tiles y. We go to that over 2 f32. All right, we can say we're looking for half tiles x. All right, let's go over to f32. All right, which is 20. Yeah, just leave it, it's fine. Because at some point the stuff on the left will be a variable and the stuff on the right will continue to be a constant, so that's fine. Uh, yeah, we can just say dot zero here to keep things looking Ready. We probably don't even need to be this explicit about F32s, I think. Especially if we're gonna put decimals in. Yeah. I think that that's. Oh, no. Alright. Let's go ahead and say F32 here then. I think that that will make it compile happy. Uh, so we can't be explicit about the F32 in one place. You know, all this stuff will be good. The vision should even be precise and stuff. Um, so what do we want? We had some sort of texture handle in here. We're like, yo dude, use this texture handle and stuff, please. Good, thank you. What if we like... So what was our... What was our thing here? What was our default with this camera? Originally get it, got it to work with. It stopped working for us a moment ago. And it's very confusing as to why. Oh right, yeah, we just had a default camera. All right. Oh yeah. So now it's now it's gonna be mad, mad now. All right. That's fine. We could just we could just replace all of this with half y. Right. Like somebody said something. Ah, but Nufik five eighty nine says hi. Hello Nufik five eighty nine. Good to see you there. Hopefully I caught you in time. <laughs> Because I am, I'm like, whew, just trying, trying hard. Make some stuff happen, right? It's kind of the, it's kind of the idea. All right, so yes, right now we're not using use, we're not, but that's fine, we're not worried about it. So we've got half tiles Y and half tiles X. Um, so let's go ahead and go back here to our half tiles one. We got some half tiles x and we want positive half tiles x. So just a little bit of, you know, keep it things same, you not too too much maths. That's what the halves are math operations. That's fine. 
And right now, yeah, we said default, but what? What if we said orthographic? Okay, actually, wait. That's right. I think we were gonna be. I think we were about to test something, and then I got distracted. So I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna compile that. <sighs> All right. Maybe maybe I took too long to respond to Newfix. <laughs> or Newfix. My bad. It's, uh, ah, there we go. Yeah, I was wondering about education and computer science. Is a degree necessary for a computer science related job? Well, I'll tell you what, Mufik. It will make your life easier and it will help you to gain access to the upper echelons of the salary brackets faster for you to have a degree. But I know several, including myself, who did not get started in the computer science field by obtaining a degree. I was. I, I was started trying to code around age 12. Uh, I, w I got into the computer science programs at my high school. I got a 5 out of 5 on my AB computer science uh, exam, I guess, which was supposed to give me some number of credits toward a college degree. I forget how many offhand. It might have been as many as 12? I'm not sure, maybe maybe 8, maybe 12, something like that. I did the uh, computer science AB sort of, um, it wasn't CLEP, it was like, a, yeah, one of, the, one of those, uh, as opposed to AP exams, I guess, right? And they're supposed to convert into college credits. Uh, and I did do some college, but most of the college I did uh, at the time was trying to do the, get the fundamental stuff out of the way. The, but I also had a job programming since before I graduated from high school. Uh, first I had an internship uh, at Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab, and then I had a, uh, a job, you know, sometime later, right, where the, like, I guess, you know, second half or so into my junior year, uh, you know, first half or so of my senior year, I think I had a, I had a paying job as a uh, as a programmer at where at a variety of places. So, but yeah, but one was at Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab, and then I had a another one with a small local company. And so it's really a matter of building up the skills, building up the the education, building up the contacts. And just like with everything else in this world, it very much seems like it's about who you know. Uh, sort of a thing. I was lucky enough that I am a second-generation programmer. My my father programmed before I, and now I have a 14-year-old kid who I'm like, yes, I would like to teach her to program, so that she can say that she's a third-generation programmer. She can then go around saying stuff like, you know, my father was a programmer and his father before him, and uh, you know that sort of a thing. That's sort of the that's the dream. But yes, indeed, thank you very much for the follow, Nufik589. I hope I was answering your questions. Let's see. 17 and started with Python. Your main studying is civil engineering, but it's not what you want to do in the future. Huh? 17, huh? Well, civil, civil engineering starts, starts sound like collegiate sort of uh, space is there. 17 sounds like maybe junior or senior in high school, depending on... Uh, when the birthday was, and whether or not, I guess, grades were skipped, and etc. Right? Um, let's see, I know I graduated basically as soon as I hit 18. Uh, from high school, that is. Right? Uh, yeah, did, did some college. But, uh, but yeah, I just I just kept getting full-time jobs programming. So eventually it was just like, yeah, I'm, I'm good to go. I, I guess I don't need the college anymore. Keep acquiring these full-time jobs that like, pay okay. But yeah, um, so it's questionable as to whether, like, you know, the various salary drops. Uh, I think that, like, you know, in some ways my curve went, like, a little differently in the beginning. But then uh, toward the end, it was very, uh, you know... Especially middling or so, people don't. People still don't quite want to like give me the the highest paying slots, right? 
But uh, even though now I'm, I think I'm up to 20 years of professional programming experience. But I've, I've had them, and I don't have them, and I have them, and I don't have them. It's like they're always trying to move the bar. <laughs> yeah, it, so that is what it is. So, yeah, I, I think everyone... So is a, is a degree required to do this job? Absolutely not. Uh, could it hurt you later on in terms of salary negotiations not having a degree? Yes, yes it could. That sort of a thing. And some people are quite snobbish, so it depends on kind of where you're at. Let's see, wondering about education, computer science. Yeah, okay. But yeah, so the education systems are different from where we're at, I'm, I, 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 I expect. But, uh... And I imagine that that sort of culture may be different, too. I know, especially East Coast US, that they are, uh... I think they're, you know, a little, a little snobby. But to be honest, I think that Silicon Valley... It's probably, they're probably even way more snobbish. Way more. I'm not sure, though. I've never been there. But based on everything I've seen and read and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. But I'm doing okay for myself. So ho hopefully uh, you'll, you'll do pretty well, too. Uh, yeah, programming programming is a lot of fun. It's a struggle sometimes. Sometimes it's like a, uh, it's like a science. You know, it's easy to come up with hypotheses and test them and see what that's about and other times it's like where we're at now where it's like yeah you know, it's a struggle i'm struggling with uh the stuff that bevy's got going on in terms of like well how how am i supposed to do this orthographic projection camera correctly because uh i i should have thought all right so here with the default camera again she renders but when i put in the other orthographic camera she should, she should be bigger. Uh, by a fair amount, actually. Because uh, right now she's scaled kind of a 1 to 1 pixel ratio to game unit ratio. And we're going to be changing that from a 1 to 1 to like to 1 to 32. So she'd be, she, she should be 32 times larger. Uh, when, our, when our camera is correct, I think. No, oh, what am I saying? 32 times larger? That don't make no sense. No, isn't it? It should just be 4. I am not making an engine, no, I am using some a very cutting edge engine. So it's a you know very very new sort of thing. Now they're just it seems like they're just getting started, right? So I'm using the Bevy Rust engine here. It is a data-driven game engine in Rust, in the Rust programming language. So I'm having come with this. So they've just recently come out with Bevy 0.2. So I'm just trying to I'm trying to use the engine that they made, uh, sort of a thing. If I if I do decide to abandon Bevy, then I may be going with the route of kind of like a, not making my own engine per se, so much as like you know the game is the engine, because uh, that's you know you just code up a game using whatever will work, right? I was going to make a lot of similar choices to what uh, this fellow made. That's why I went with it, right? He wants to... he's doing a lot of the same stuff. Okay, this is... this Robo. I wanted to take a look at Bevy's sign here, right? So he's using WGPURS, I would have used that. You know, GlamRS seems fine and good. So I don't see why I wouldn't use that. Winit is good now, so I, I'd use that. You know, all these things. Seems like the sort of choices I would have made. So I was like, hey, I'll, I'll get on the ground floor with this bevy stuff and see what that's about. So I'm just trying to trying to get an orthographic camera working. Let's see, so that I can get back to playing around. I wanted to do... So I've got this going inside of a console renderer. All right. So the idea basically is to have a similar sort of tile-esque grid that I can render stuff to, so I can play around with uh, randomly generated maps and the whole nine, and you know, get get this sort of top-down RPG feel going. Super simple graphics uh, to to play with at first. I've done some graphical experiments before. If you check out my about page, you'll see some screenshots that I've uh, managed to dig up from earlier work. That was a lot of it was playing around with Godot, a little bit with Amethyst. But, uh, yeah, just playing around with stuff. 
Let's see. Uh, Scala and Java is my most used language. That's what pays the bills. Uh, Rust is the new kid on the block, and uh, I think it's uh, you know, the future of programming in many ways. So I'm having fun you know, learning that, getting used to it, uh, you know, getting away from Java and Scala a little bit. That's, uh, that's, that's what pays the bills. I guess uh, web development pay, pays the bills too. Let's see. So HTML5, JavaScript, CSS, that sort of thing. So, there we go. Future is in Python. Oh no, no, no. Python's dead to me. I ain't using Python. Are you kidding me? It's like one of those languages I'm like, nope. Nope. Uh, HTML is, you know, it exists. <laughs> oh man, it's like it's just like it's not using my camera. I don't get why. Man, now but Rust is cool because Rust, not being a garbage collected language, right? Camera, camera projection. Wait, we're playing around with that. Because it's not garbage collected. You know, it's a lot easier for it to be used in WASM now. So, earlier we took a look at... I was taking a look at some source code, right? And here's, uh, here's Bevy Robo, right? Which is cool. So, we're going to come up here to News. Where'd you go, man? Posts? Yeah. Alright, so posts, bevy news. Uh, playable here. So this is inside of my browser. This is Rust inside of my browser. Alright. So. And I can get this on the webs. Hmm. I can't seem to. Alright, so you can't move it. That does get us further. What happens if I put it there? No? I'm just stuck, I think. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so much for that. Alright. <laughs> Anyways. So, yeah. So this is main Rust. And look at this. It's inside of my web browser. How sweet is that? Now here's the here's the here's the HTML code for it, right? Uh, what do we got here? So there's a font thing, script type module, import init from our WASM stuff, right? Init, good to go. What does the what does the JavaScript even do? So if I said, there we go. There's something or other, right? So give me some of those network resources. Control R. There we go. Here's our bevy, right? Robo.js stuff, right? All in here. So I guess he's got some sort of JavaScript in here. He'd be talking to some WASM stuff, right? So WASMs. We got some WASM vectors and some other stuff. I don't know. Who were the? Failed to load that one, huh? Yeah. And here's a .wasm file. That's a binary file. I probably don't want it to load up directly there. <laughs> but yeah. So. That's pretty fun. That's the idea. So, Rust will give us the flexibility to deploy natively to the desktop, or to the web. And uh, Bevy is a uh, kind of baby in the woods sort of a game engine built on top of Rust. And it exports to WASM. So, again, it gives us plenty of flexibility for all sorts of uh, environments to, to play with. I see you figure out how to get these maps, how to get these cameras going. <sighs> Alright. So I'm pretty sure that with scenes here, it's about loading scenes and doing some other stuff, which is fine. Game breakout. Okay, breakout. Tell me you've got some camera stuff in here. The default camera? Really? 
All right, fine. Um, uh, does not feel like it's using my orthographic projection at all. Just like, all right. So what if I said, all right, camera, camera. We've broken something before, it seemed like. What, what's your malfunction? Some fields are missing. Yes, I know. Just relax. So we're gonna do the, uh, oh! Default, default. Oh, I'm gonna come after that. Mm. And then what? We can come back in here in the camera. And it's got, it's got a name. Right, which is fine. But we want the camera 2D, right? Name, right? So we're gonna say name. Yes, I am using uh, IntelliJ. That is true. I believe that is uh, that's a Czech thing too, isn't it? You said you were from uh, Czech Republic, right? Yeah, and I was pretty sure IntelliJ. Those folks there, yeah, software from your country. Indeed, it is. Indeed, it is. I remember that. So that's pretty cool, right? Yeah, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so you're 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 so you're watching a you're watching an American, okay? Use Czech software. <laughs> he uh, tries to do some stuff. Uh, that's pretty fun. All right. Yeah, so camera 2D. That's kind of the idea there, right? Oh my gosh, what are you mad about? You just wanted a string, right? Oh, you want, a, you want some string. All right, that's fine. That's fine. Some string. Let's do that. That's better. Listen, it's less unhappy, anyways. Why are we naming the camera? I don't know. Somebody else did. I'll throw it in there. Oh, look, it disappeared. <laughs> <My goodness. sighs> Alright, so naming the camera makes her disappear okay so oh goodness why why does the name of the camera matter so much all right let's uh where's your default right we don't want the no we what do we want we wanted the default for camera 2d components i think Right, because yeah, we want your default. Because your default says to use this guy. This this one two string, right? Right. Which is so weird. So if I replace name. Alright, if I recall correctly, right, I, I'm pretty sure I got the string correct. That's uh what are you doing here? Yeah, yeah, base, etc. I'm trying to come back into you. All right, yes, and camera 2D to string. Okay, what if I just name it correctly? Will, will she show up then? Is that D supposed to be lowercase? Yes, okay, lowercase D. All right, so there it is. So we're just gonna, we're gonna make sure we have the correct name now. All right. All right, run that. Hey, and she shows back up again. All right. <laughs> That's so, so weird. All right, now for fun, I wanted to change the projection. Right? Yeah, projection matrix. Pretty sure that's what we want. I don't think about no depth calculations. All right, so let's go ahead. Yeah, we're gonna change the projection matrix to be what? The same thing as this orthographic projection dot Get the projection matrix. All right. 
crazy how changing the name of the camera it makes her not show up. Oh, it's still messed up though. Like, come on, man. This is this is not cool. What on earth? <sighs> I got some I got some reading and stuff to do. Getting to be on six PM. Maybe some maybe getting called down for dinner soonish. I'm not sure. And this is, uh, this is frustrating. Alright, so... We know that the game, we know that the engine is definitely using this camera. It must be using the camera, because if I, if I make the slightest change to this text here, and I, and I wait a moment for it to compile and run in things, and she doesn't show up at all. Yep, gone. Where did she go? Hmm. Alright. But... Alright, so, so it must be using something about this camera. But even when I tell it, no really, please use this projection matrix from my orthographic camera. It is not doing what I expected to do. I expect her to be four times larger, I think? Yes. At least. Maybe even larger. Alright. Hmm. So I'm not going to get it. I'm just not getting it. Graphic projection, is that what I'm playing around with? <sighs> uh, yeah. Thanks, let's just. Boom. Boom. Alright. <laughs> camera. Camera 2D camera renders nothing if scale is less than 1. Right? Mm hmm. Scaling bevy. Mm -hmm. uh. All right, how can bevy operate at this scale? All right. I don't think that's is this I don't think this has anything to do with what it is that we're looking at doing. Alright. Hmm. Come on, baby. Learn. There's a book here. But this book don't tell us nothing about cameras. Yeah. Orthographic isn't perspective. But, um so there, yeah, it is. It is, most certainly is a perspective, right? So there's a there's the orth orthographic, right? And then there's like the uh, projection, I believe it was what it is, right? And the oh, oh wait, okay, okay. I think I was slightly confused. Correct. It's not it's not perspective. Orthographic is not perspective. But the, both orthographic and perspective are projections, right? So, so there's an orthographic projection, there's a 3D projection, aka the perspective projection, right? So you see things here, like what's the difference between orthographic and perspective projection, right? So that's uh, so that's, that's what this is. This is an orthographic projection. Uh, yeah. 
uh, perspective is the uh, 3D one. Uh, is projecting... Right, so with or so with orthographic stuff, right, it's like uh, your 2D games, right? Your Zeldas, your sprites and stuff. You know, you've got a 32-bit sprite, or 32, you know, by 32 size sprite, and you want to show up as exactly as that. Uh, my, my thing is here is there's zooming and stuff and things to do. But yeah, perspective is scaling. Yes. That's right. So yeah, and with perspective, you've got fields of view. And as things are farther away, they tend to shrink and stuff, right? You, you set up fields of view too, and uh, it's about heights and stuff. And, uh, this is just this is just the two D one. Which uh, maybe I need maybe I need to refresh myself on how to do these uh, orthographic projections. I was getting the impression just by virtue of the fact of setting up the the left, you know, the bounds the way I want to would have set me up with the sort of coordinate system I was looking for. Uh, where basically I wanted zero, zero in the middle of the window, right? So, so negative up to the tiles, right? Anyways, that's... Maybe I'm confused about what I'm getting here. Uh, I, don't, I don't think so, though. No, I don't think so. I guarantee you, if I if I if I went to Amethyst and I did this exact sort of setup, I would get what I want. I've done it before. I do it again. Uh, yeah. Uh, I was looking for that too when I was learning myself about non-Euclidean geometry. Yeah. He did the same thing I did. Is it the update function that's messing with me? What does this get called? Because he just comes along and he just resets stuff. So, like, not what I told it to reset it to. We did set, like, window origin. Is there, like, a non-window origin? Like, like, leave me alone window origin? Where's, where's that one? Cause this doesn't say sum or anything else, right? So if I go to, if I go to window origin here. Yeah, it's just the two. It's just the two, just like I thought. Right? So... Is that update function messing with me? So I have an original image file, I'm trying to display it. Uh, I'm displaying it properly already. The problem is it's not scaling it properly. I'm trying to set the... I'm trying to set it up to to do like a tile-based graphics. Uh, the idea... So I took all these notes and stuff earlier in the stream. Let's see, what did I do? Where's my notes at? There we go. Right, so I, we basically want to have like 16 by 16 tiles to start off with to keep the art super simple. I basically almost want to take like a roguelike approach to how we do things at first with uh, sort of auto-generated maps. You throw down the tiles, you know, keep everything super simple. So we get a lot of the game mechanics done, figure out a lot of that sort of stuff, right? And we'll kind of worry about the real art for the game later. As we, uh, so, oh, you know, I, I took all these notes, did all these things. So I determined, like, for each of these resolutions, like, basically, uh, what sort of multiplier I want on the 16 by 16 tile. Because, uh, you know, if you've got, like, some 4K resolution that you're viewing the game at, uh, kind of like Zoom. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's kind of like Zoom. But it's also about setting up the coordinate system of the window, right? Because the whole the whole thing is about matching uh, window coordinates, the window pixels, right, with game units, right? That's 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 the that's the sort of thing that we're doing there, and so, so that's why I determined here in the main, I was just gonna like, I I know right now we're just playing around with a 1920 by 1080 window. 
right? So I was like, yep, yeah, so I want uh, a height of 22.5 tiles. I want a width of 40 tiles. Right, so then we're like, okay, cool. So then the left half of the screen is half of our X tiles. The right half is, you know, again half, right? And that puts zero at the center of the window. That's the idea. Which is, uh, you know, it seems like a reasonable thing to want. And I think that we must have, it, it must be at zero. And it must be at zero because if I send her off, like, what, to 960, then she should show up at the left-hand side of the screen. How will you test a 4K? I do have a laptop with 4K graphics, uh, should, should I want to. But also I could just play around with the windows, right? So it's fine. I do, have, I do have the equipment for testing this thing. So yeah, so she shows up exactly where I thought she would, considering that, you know, I think it's the update function that's messing with me. I think it's the update function that's messing with me. Um, because this this right here, this is correct. This is the correct setup for for the camera. But when I came into, I don't remember where, or, or, orthographic projection maybe. Right, and we were kind of looking at like, okay, get the orthographic matrix, good, that looks good and correct. Then I see this update function here, and I was thinking about it, I was like, this it's likely calling this in some system somewhere that I'm not aware of. And okay, it takes in a width and it takes in a height. And I'm beginning to wonder, wait, is that is that is that a screen width? Is that my screen height? Well, how do I change that? Because I don't I don't want this width to be 1920. I don't want this height to be 1080. Right? I want it to be the number of tiles, basically. Right? So this this should be 40. This should be 22.5. Uh, but I think something somewhere is calling it. And then look, it just it just it just completely changes what I did. Every time this sort of update is called, right? So it's like, well, darn. All right, fine. I'm gonna have to figure this out. So, well, that means I have to make my own sort of camera projection for orthographic projection or what? Maybe I need to override how the update is called? Let's see here. And you are trying to scale every pixel, for example, by two. Uh, yes, that is, that is correct. So inside of the, yes. So for a 1920 by 1080, it's actually times three. Uh, and the idea here is, let's see, where did my stuff go? Because I was looking at something earlier, this guy's article here. Where the idea is to try to get pixel perfect uh, graphics. Now he cheated a little bit because he's happy with uh, this sort of uh, buffer space here. These sidebars and top bars. And so then the game sort of floats within this sort of a window to maintain perfect pixel uh, accuracy. Whereas I'm, I'm okay if the, if the game world gets bigger or smaller. Oh, hello, N Nixiative. I, I recall you. Yes, I remember you from the other day. Excellent. Good to see you again. Yeah, we're trying to do some pixel-perfect scaling. We're trying to get a... But I'm, I'm pretty sure that this update function in here is what's messing with me. I'm pretty sure it's being called. And then it's being called with the width and height of the window. And then being called with that, it does, um, <laughs> it just ignores the values that I set in here. I'm pretty sure that's what's happening. So I'm going to have to do some research to go into Bevy, uh, figure out what's going on with that. Man. Um, see if I can't override it somehow. You know what? Thinking about it again, thinking about it again, I think that this robo guy did. He must have done something, right? I've seen... Because he, he did the same thing that I did with his render system. I kind of ignored the fact that he had done something with the... Uh, not in the systems, I think I'm going to go to plugins. Yes, plugins. There we go. I kind of ignored the fact that he had some sort of a camera update. All right. 
Are you just messing with me now? No, there was something in here. Uh, okay, update camera. My bad. All right. So yeah, update camera. So yeah, he has he has his own update camera, which he's done something with, right? Which uh, yeah, it's, it's all about changing the sort of camera scale and camera translation and camera stuff and things, right? Which is which is fine. Um. But yeah, I'm trying. Yeah, I'm trying to do pixel perfect uh, scaling, but um. But unlike the, the guy who did the Godot article, I'm happy with the seeing more or less of the world as required. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. But yeah. But, but, but all of that is about setting up the orthographic camera correctly. And uh, what am I doing here? Yeah, so this guy, this guy did something with some sort of update camera system. So he adds that to a stage, the update camera stage, which he has before, add stage before, post update. Oh, alright, so that's fun. Just like he has prepare render. It might also be good to see what prepare render does. Alright, yeah, so he's got some frames count, some options. Some items here that include entities, positions, tiles, transforms, etc. Hmm. Alright. So. Um, I think I need to worry about this so far. Do I? Prepare render. I don't know. Let's see, prepare. <laughs> All right, transforms. Yeah, four entity position tiles, transform, etc. Do. If too smooth update. Hmm. I don't know. Anyways, I'm worry about that later. I just want to get this camera working. Scale, camera tra What does camera scale do? Scale X dot max, huh? That's I guess what he's returning. Max is scale Y. Ah. Whichever of these numbers is bigger, return that for the camera scale. Alright, that's fine. That's just a thing that returns a f number. So that's weird. Ah, I see. That's part of update camera. This is part of camera translation. All right. But you think you just, since camera translation needs the camera scale, you think you'd have just given it to it rather than having it called camera scale again. But whatever. Um. Hmm. So yeah. So it gets the scale here and does some stuff to figure out how it wants to translate the camera. That's fun. Right. We're not. Right there, yeah. We just want it to. Hmm. I don't know. I'm just sure something is going on that is messing with these bounds that I set. Seems like that's what we want. Hmm. I don't know. Oh, I think I'm. I think I'm really just gonna have to take a take a little break. Maybe get some food. I think I'm starting to smell something good down there. 
Um, you know, go through the docs, tear through the tear through some examples and stuff, figure out what's going on. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe there's something in the something I need to get rid of somewhere. Let's see, there's like a where's the add default? In default. So there we go. All right, so he's like. He's got transform plugins, core plugins, window plugins, scene plugins, I mean, all these things. Where's like our camera plugin at? Okay. Like a sprite plugin. Yeah. What's going on with you, sprite plugin? Yeah, I guess he didn't automatically bring in the thing, right? See, add system to stage, post update. There's the sprite system. Right? Anything for cameras in here? I don't see any. Cameras. Yeah, use a flipped quad because the camera is facing forward. The quad should face backwards. Alright. Stuff out. Anyways, yeah, I got some, I got some figuring out to do. I think I need to take a break. <laughs> anyway, so it's been good, good coding with you guys. Good meeting some folks. Good seeing some uh, people return. That's excellent. Uh, wow. Uh, so yeah, just playing around, playing around with cameras, trying to figure out what it is that we want to do, trying to get it to use what we told it to do. Sort of a thing here. So we'll we'll fi we'll figure it out. It's just some matter of. Getting in there and making sure that uh, it sticks with uh, what we told it to do. Yeah? Alright, cool. So, I'll uh, see you guys later.